I'm Warren Hogue, IPI's Senior Advisor for External Relations, and our guest today in this IPI Global Observatory interview series with candidates vying to become the next United Nations Secretary General is Natalia German, former Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and European Integration of the Republic of Moldova. I'm going to ask Ambassador German the same four questions that we will be putting to the other candidates for Secretary General whom we will be interviewing for the Global Observatory. We have shared these questions with her in advance and we'll be doing so with subsequent interviewees. So first, the United Nations Charter describes the Secretary General as the, quote, chief administrative officer of the organization, unquote and the person who can call the attention of the Security Council to matters the Secretary General believes may threaten international peace and security. But the job has evolved into something much more than that, a mix of global diplomacy and oversight of the UN's executive office serving the three pillars of the organization, human rights, peace and security, and development. How would you shape the job and define your priorities? for the office. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I am indeed an official candidate of the Republic of uh, Moldova for what it seems to be the most uh, challenging but also very important job in the world. And uh, defining the parameters of the job, I would say that it has to reflect the um, uh, priorities of the global agenda. And uh, nowadays, uh, these priorities include the traditional field of uh, international peace and security. And uh, here the challenges will be enormous, since uh, the world, unfortunately, is not uh, a safer or more secure place than it used to be at the moment of creation uh, of uh, the United Nations uh, organization, uh, with the emergence of new actors and uh, the scourge of international terrorism and the traditional definitions of what is conflict and what is war do not necessarily apply uh, in order to describe uh, uh, the uh, world conflicts uh, of today. So that would necessitate the whole range of both uh, conflict uh, prevention um, tools and instruments at the disposal of the Secretary General of the United uh, Nations uh, uh, but uh, uh, also uh, the whole new uh, culture of um, prevention and crisis uh, management. And while we are talking about the crisis management, I think it necessitates more than ever before a united and much better coordinated response of the international community uh, in order to put end to crisis uh, and violence. And whatever we will be doing and whatever we are doing, uh, as uh, United Nations, we have to put people at the center of all the efforts and we have to make, make sure that uh, uh, the civilian population is uh, well protected. Uh, there will be uh, another important uh, field uh, that is uh, shaped by um, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and that will be the uh, delivery on uh, the ambitious Sustainable Development Goals that we all agreed and committed to last year. Uh, but implementation effort would necessitate a totally different approach and a shift of the mindset, as uh, um, I would uh, even put it. That would necessitate uh, partnerships, um, new ones um, at the regional, uh, local, but also global level, and the consolidating of the existing ones. And we will have to succeed only if we involve uh, everybody in this common effort, meaning uh, the governments, uh, uh, the civil society, the private sector, even international media to communicate and articulate about what is it that we are going to do. And it will require a much better uh, coordinated United Nations to make sure that there is no fragmentation and we all work uh, in uh, a fashion that would be complementary and mutually reinforcing. And I would continue, obviously, to work hard in order uh, uh, for uh, the member states uh, to deliver on the standards uh, and norms in the field of the human rights, making sure that the human dignity and the rights of individuals are well respected in conformity 
with the Charter of the United Nations and with the provisions of the Universal Declaration for Human Rights. It will be uh, very important as well to make sure that the management of the whole organization is done um, uh, in an impeccable fashion, that the United Nations uh, needs to be stronger in order to deliver faster, better and more efficiently. Thank you. Uh, the second question is, can you discuss aspects of your background and professional career that manifest one, proven leadership, managerial abilities and strategic vision, two, extensive experience in international relations and multilateral diplomacy, and three, strong global communication skills? I would refer to my uh, national experience in the executive branch in the Republic of uh, Moldova uh, that I started uh, uh, as uh, a young diplomat um, uh, many years ago and uh, I reached to the position of uh, foreign minister and deputy prime minister and I was even the acting prime minister a short period of time in the service uh, uh, of the citizens of the Republic of Moldova. And uh, while talking about my managerial experience, I would um, uh, probably stress the ability to cope with um, um, different uh, fields and uh, uh, sometimes uh, challenges in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, numerous um, uh, sectors uh, at the same time, uh, ranging um, uh, from ensuring uh, a better uh, security arrangements uh, to provide for security and stability of uh, the citizens of my country because we continue to face, uh, unfortunately, the challenges of an unresolved conflict on the territory of the Republic of Moldova. We operate in uh, conditions of uh, uh, a very uh, fragile, from the security point of view, regional environment uh, uh, in Eastern Europe and in Southeastern Europe in particular. Uh, and uh, uh, together with that, we have uh, the daily agenda uh, on the sustainable development issues in Moldova. And it's only recently that we reached um, uh, the status of a middle-income uh, country uh, with um, remaining um, tasks to provide for better uh, education, better health services, um, secure the energy resources uh, of the country uh, and uh, uh, make sure that we do take care of uh, uh, the environment. Th these are all the tasks that continue to be on the agenda uh, and uh, these are all the tasks that uh, uh, continue to be uh, relevant in a broader United Nations uh, context. We also had to deal with um, establishment of the human rights standards and uh, creating the institutions that will be also people-centered and place the respect for human rights at the center of uh, uh, the uh, activity. But uh, one of the biggest uh, achievements uh, uh, that I'm actually very proud of is uh, uh, the experience of leading the national team um, as chief negotiator on be behalf of the Republic of Moldova in the process of uh, negotiating the association agreement between the Republic of Moldova and the European Union and uh, negotiating the deep and comprehensive free trade area. Uh, in parallel with that, I was the national coordinator for the visa liberalization dialogue for my citizens and all three um, fields uh, uh, were crowned with success uh, and because uh, for in order to prepare the country to embrace the new standards uh, and uh, uh, the new uh, criteria uh, and be eligible for European integration, you really have to had to work hard while negotiating uh, in the field of preparation and that required uh, the introdu introduction of new mechanisms, new instruments, uh, preparing uh, the people, the professionals, to embrace uh, the new legislation and thoroughly implement it. Uh, and that also uh, required good uh, diplomatic and negotiation skills, because it's all about partnerships, as we said. We had to learn from the others in order to shorten the time uh, before uh, those important uh, agreements uh, were implemented. And now that uh, I look back, I'm very proud to say that the free trade area between Moldova and the European Union, for example, is a very well-functioning deal. And we have free uh, trade access to a market 
that is more than 500 million consumers uh, for exports of all the goods that uh, we are producing. And this is uh, probably one of the best contributions to the sustainable development of my own country. And at the global level, uh, you asked me, I think I can be um, uh, also putting at the service of uh, the United Nations my uh, multilateral experience, uh, because I was uh, ambassador of Moldova to the United Nations in uh, Vienna and uh, uh, also to the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. And most recently, as a foreign minister and deputy for prime minister, I led the intergovernmental dialogue uh, within the United Nations system on um, uh, the Agenda 2030. And uh, as a result of the two years long experience, uh, uh, we have contributed to, in particular, goal number 16, which is about uh, uh, responsible institutions in the service of, uh, the, go of the citizens and which is about uh, uh, providing and uh, enhancing the um, uh, rule of law and good governance in all our countries. I'm very proud that uh, uh, as a result of the intergovernmental consultations in Chisinau, in the capital of the Republic of Moldova, we had a big high-level meeting of uh, the United Nations member states, which resulted in the Chisinau outcome statement and the whole range of recommendations that were reflected in goal number 16, which uh, uh, is a very important part of 2030 agenda. So this is what I bring with me as my experience, and I'm hopeful that it will be uh, used uh, to good service of the United Nations in case very I'm elected. Very good. The third question actually is about the 2030 agenda. Mm -hmm. Let me restate it and maybe you just add a sentence or two to what you've already said about your ideas. The 2030 agenda and the Paris Agreement afford the UN an opportunity to move forward under the most comprehensive sustainable development agenda in its history. The 17 sustainable development goals known as the SDGs have universal application to all countries from north to south. They integrate the three fundamental aspects of development, economic, social, and environmental, and they include issues that were once outside the scope of development, namely peace and climate change. How do you see the Secretary General's role in promoting and prioritizing this overall agenda? I'm sure it will require the new approach and the new mindset of all of us um, in order to deliver on implementation. It would require joining of efforts of absolutely all stakeholders, starting with um, uh, the member states uh, and then of course uh, the um, uh, local communities within the states, reaching out to civil society, reaching out to research community, to the private sector and uh, international media in order to raise awareness and uh, bring it uh, uh, into the priority area of absolutely all policy makers. But it would also require a United Nations that is fit for the job, uh, that is uh, well um, coordinated, that help the governments uh, all around uh, the world to uh, ensure that there is the exchange of best practices that there is uh, enough training and there is enough um, experience sharing uh, and also that there are adequate resources that have to, be, have to be committed in order to deliver on ambitious 2030 agenda that might also come from all different partnerships. And the partnerships uh, uh, would include uh, also uh, those with international financial institutions, as I said, uh, particularly the World Bank, in the case of uh, sustainable development um, and, uh, uh, as I said, different stakeholders in uh, uh, the private um, sector. And uh, uh, I think that uh, the word solidarity is also very appropriate in the given context. Uh, and for us in Eastern Europe, the word solidarity has a very special meaning, as you know. Uh, and that concept triggered uh, revolutionary changes in the part of the world I come from. And I'm absolutely sure that if we manifest nowadays solidarity of uh, the rich with the poor, of developed country with developing countries, if we prioritize the needs of those who are mostly vulnerable in the whole process in conditions of um, solidarity, uh, then we would only succeed. And the, uh, I 
cherish the motto of 2030 agenda, no one should be left behind. And this is exactly how we are going to achieve, put a person, put people in the center of uh, everything. And then uh, we just make sure that uh, we serve the people and the rest will just come around that main objective in a natural way. And I'm sure that the next Secretary Gen General will have to start the job from day one, organizing and delivering on Agenda 2030. And the fundamentals should be set right, because the first five years will be instrumental and crucial to move forward and advance on the whole agenda. Excellent. And then the fourth question is an open question. Is there finally something you would like to elaborate on or emphasize in outlining your thoughts on the job of Secretary General and its possibilities? I'm absolutely convinced that uh, the Secretary General has to be an excellent negotiator and a person who would try and strive for consensus and for understanding between different parties and stakeholders create the conditions for unity, unity among the member states, unity among the members of the Security Council, members of the General Assembly, uh, providing uh, the necessary information, uh, uh, drawing on the uh, prevention uh, and early warning uh, capacity that exists in the Secretariat and the Secretary General has to uh, use uh, uh, th that, that important capacity. Uh, the Secretary General uh, obviously has to uh, articulate uh, very clearly uh, the issues and the problems that otherwise would be very difficult to, to hear or to learn about and be at the service uh, uh, of, uh, and the guardian actually, of the principles enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations that remain as relevant today as they uh, were at the moment of creation of the organization, and I would say, if not more relevant nowadays. And as Doug Hammarskjöld once said, uh, the values and the ideas that uh, uh, were enshrined in the Charter have never failed us. Sometimes we failed those ideas, and it is the job of the Secretary General to make sure that whatever we do, uh, the activity of the UN is purpose-driven and purpose-oriented. For me, this purpose is uh, uh, actually to deliver on the values of the Charter. And if we are going to do this, I'm sure we will succeed in order to make the world uh, a safer, uh, more prosperous uh, uh, world for the citizens uh, that uh, we are to serve all of us who work in the United Nations system uh, and the Secretary General in the very first place. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much.